So, we were discussing about how resting membrane potential was generated, how action potential was generated, and how action potential was transmitted from one segment of the cell to the other segment in contractile myocardial cells. Now we also have specialized myocardial cells which includes sinoatrial node, SA node, AV node and Purkinje G cells. So let us understand now how resting membrane potential and action potential is generated in an SA nodal cell and how they are transmitted to an adjacent cells. So here we have an SA nodal cell. Let's suppose this is an SA nodal cell. So quite similar to the other cells, the contractile myocardial cells, the SA nodal cells also have the sodium potassium ATPase which is regularly throwing out sodium and gaining in potassium and they also have leaky potassium channels through which they are losing potassium. So all these phenomena are quite similar to that of contractile myocardium. Now we know because of this running process, the concentration of sodium ions concentrated outside the cell or which in the extracellular place is higher and the concentration of potassium ions in the intracellular compartment is also higher. So obviously both because of the concentration gradient and because of the electrical gradient the sodium will have a tendency to move into the cell and potassium will have a tendency to move out of the cell. In contractile myocardium we saw that sodium outside the cell in the resting phase was not able to get into the cells because the sodium channels at resting phase were closed. But at the same time, potassium channels during the resting phase were open and the leaky channels were permitting potassium efflux from the contractile myocardial cells. Now, how does this differ in an SA nodal cell? In the SA nodal cell also, the potassium channels are open and we have efflux of potassium channels. But at the same time, we also have sodium channels here which are functional and they are also leaking some amount of sorry the direction is different they are also leaking some amount of sodium from the extracellular compartment into the intracellular compartment so the only one difference what we have in contrast to the contractile myocardium is that the sodium channels which are closed in the contractile myocardium during resting phase here they are open so what happens if they are open? If they are open, we understood that in contractile myocardium, it was the efflux of potassium which was responsible for generation of the resting membrane potential to minus 90 millivolt. But here if you see, it is true that the cell is losing cations through ATPases. It is true that the cell is losing cation through the potassium channel. But at the same time, the cell is also gaining some cation through the free leaky sodium channels. Which means the resting membrane potential of this SA nodal cell 
cannot go down to minus 90 millivolt as seen in the contractile myocardium. Instead, instead, it can only reach up to minus 60 millivolt. So because of all these process, the resting membrane potential generated inside an SA nodal cell is minus 60 millivolt. Now after generation of the resting membrane potential, we still have the sodium channel leaking. The sodium channel continues to leak, which means automatically the negatively charged state of the cell slowly, slowly, slowly will progress towards positive charge because the cell is gaining cations. So from the resting membrane potential of minus 60 millivolt, now the voltage of the cell raises towards minus 45 millivolt, which is the threshold potential for an SA nodal cell. In contrast, in myocardial cell, we had a resting membrane potential of minus 90 and a threshold potential of minus 70. But here, in an SA nodal cell, just because of this leaky sodium channel, the resting membrane potential is set at minus 60 millivolt and the threshold potential is set at minus 45 millivolt. Change, uh, change number one. Another change is that the myocardial contractile cell was maintaining the resting membrane potential of minus 90 millivolt till it was stimulated by trickling of cations from its outside. It raised its resting membrane potential from minus 90 millivolt to threshold potential of minus 70 because it was stimulated externally. But here, no external stimuli is required. That is the property of a synode. It does not require any external stimuli. Because of these leaky sodium channels, it itself can raise its potential, negative potential inside the membrane from minus 60 millivolt to minus 45 millivolt. And that is a slow process in contrast to contractile myocardium. In contractile myocardium, the initiation or the rise from resting membrane potential to threshold potential was a fast mechanism. It was minus 90 millivolt and it rose fastly, swiftly to minus 70 millivolt when it was stimulated by cationic entry. But here it is a slow process. So I say this was the resting membrane potential minus 60. Because of the leaky channels, the slow leaky channels, slowly, very slowly, the resting membrane potential rises and it touches 45 millivolts. But here it was very swift. This is for my contractile myocardium. So in SA node, from the minus 60 millivolt, it slowly rose and touches the minus 45 millivolt, which is the threshold potential for a SA nodal cell. Now, as the electrical potential touches the landmark of minus 45 millivolt, suddenly the voltage gated calcium channels open here in the SA node. So which channels are responsible here for the action potential? They are the voltage gated calcium channels. But in contrast, in contractile myocardium, it was the voltage gated sodium channels which was responsible for the depolarization. But here, it is the voltage gated calcium channels that is responsible for the depolarization. Again, in contrast to the myocardial cells, the contractile myocardial cells, the depolarization here was a swift process. As soon as the voltage-gated sodium channels opened, 
the phase zero depolarization happened all of a sudden. It was very swift. Sodium channels perform fast conduction, but calcium channels perform slow conduction. So what happens? It will not rise all of a sudden like this steeply, but instead it has a slow progression pathway. So I make it a little more slopey. So here was the baseline resting membrane potential. Slowly it rose to minus 45 millivolt. Now it has touched threshold potential. And now the calcium channels are open because of the calcium channels. There is action potential. Now the action potential will not follow a straight course. Instead it follows a sloppy course because they are slow channels compared to sodium channels in the contractor myocardium. So due to the calcium opening of the calcium channels, depolarization happens in SA nodal cells. Now as depolarization happens, the next set of channels, electrolyte channels to open are the potassium channels. So voltage gated potassium channels will open here. So as the voltage gated potassium channels open, the cell will start losing potassium. So as it loses potassium, it also closes here. We also have closure of calcium gates. So there is no more cations coming in. At the same time, we have lose, lose, the cell is losing cation. And for that reason, the cell repolarizes. It brings back its potential to negative baseline levels, which is minus 60. So this is the shape of an action potential curve in a specialized myocardium or what we call as an SA nodal cell. So the difference is as we observed, resting membrane potential was minus 60, it was not minus 90 because of the leaky sodium channel. Threshold potential was minus 45, it was not minus 70. And this cell does not require an external stimulus to take it from resting membrane potential to threshold potential. This leaky sodium channel helps itself to raise it from resting membrane potential to threshold potential. And as it touches the threshold potential, it is not the sodium channels, the voltage gated sodium channels that are opening. Instead, it is the voltage gated calcium channels that are opening. And in contrary to the uh, contractile myocardium, it's not a steep charge it's not a steep depolarization it's a slow slopey depolarization because calcium channels are slow channels and sodium channels are fast channels and once it is depolarized the depolarization sensitive repolarization channels those are the potassium channels so the depolarization sensitive repolarization channels the potassium channels are open the, the cell starts to lose cations and the cell repolarizes back to resting membrane potential. So that is how the, the cycle of action potential is completed in an SA nodal cell. Now, what happens again? Here we have all those mechanisms involved. Here we have sodium potassium ATPases. Here we also have the calcium sodium exchangers. The sodium potassium ATPases and the calcium sodium exchangers will take back all the ions. So the calcium will be going out through the calcium sodium exchangers in exchange to sodium. Sodium will be coming into the cell and this sodium will be taken out through the sodium ATPase pump and so that all the electrolyte changes that has been taken place will be reversed and the cell is now set for another cycle of action potential. So now the leaky sodium channels are still there. So they are continuing to leak. So they will take the action potential from the resting membrane potential from minus 60 to minus 45 in slow fashion. And as it touches, again the calcium channel opens and so does it go on. So there is depolarization and repolarization. Again, you have leaky sodium channels touching the threshold. Again, you have depolarization 
and repolarization so this is how it come it, it it generates its own impulses and this is why sa nodal cells are called as specialized cell they have this property of automaticity they do not require an external stimulus to 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 excite it it is stimulated by the leaky sodium channels so thanks to the leaky sodium channels we call this leaky sodium sodium channels the current passing through this leaky sodium channels as funny currents so they are funny currents so because of these funny currents they these are also called as prepotentials we also call them prepotentials so because of these prepotentials and funny currents through this leaking sodium channels they have the ability to excite themselves they do not require an excitation or a stimulation from outside and that is exactly the property of sa nodal cells what we call as automaticity so this is the mechanism behind their automaticity now we understand how how the action potential how the resting memory potential is generated here how the action potential is generated here now what we must understand is that how the action potential is being transmitted from one segment of the sa nodal cell to the other segment of the sa nodal cell so we know it was the calcium which was in it was the sodium which was involved but here we have movement of calcium from here and also the leaky sodium channels will slowly take up the action potential the resting membrane potential from minus 60 to minus 45 and it generates its own action potential by itself it does not require any any stimulation from the outside so that is how it is being conducted and the cycle completes now just imagine this is a sa nodal cell now surrounding the sa nodal cell we have so i'm just cutting this off here the waveforms it continues like that so basically from the sa node impulses will be moving towards the atria so from sa node impulses spreads towards the atria first so suppose close to this sa nodal cell just imagine let's have an atrial cell over here so this is an atrial cell over here So the action potential generation of atrial cell is quite similar to that of a ventricular cell which is uh, the contractile myocardium so atrial cell is a contractile myocardium so here the resting membrane potential is minus 90 millivolts we know that in contrast here it is minus 60 millivolts we know that now what happens we are here we have gap junctions here yes gap junctions are there between the cells of the myocardium so during the phase of depolarization when it touches the threshold when you, because of these funny currents this leaky sodium channels as the potential touches the threshold we know the voltage gated calcium channels are opening and because of this voltage gated calcium channels the depolarization is happening in the sa nodal cells so few calcium ions from here few calcium ions from here will migrate so this few calcium ions from here will migrate to the adjacent segment or through the gap junctions sometimes to the adjacent cell now this are the entry of cations entry of cation to the adjacent cell which means the adjacent cell is being loaded with cations so they are stimulated which rises the resting membrane potential of this atrial cell so this is an atrial cell and this is an sa nodal cell so it rises the resting membrane potential of this atrial cell from minus 90 millivolt to minus 70 millivolt and which will result in opening of the voltage gated sodium channels and the story goes on we know what happens next as sodium comes there is depolarization sorry there is depolarization of the uh, uh, atrial 
atrial contract and myocardium myocardial cell depolarization happens here and all the other phases continues all the other phases continues and all those phases are quite similar to any any other contractile myocardium which we have already discussed so here from the SA nodal cell the impulse passing to the atrial cell the stimulus that is passing through the atrial cell are these cations which cations the calcium ions which are influxed into the into the pacemaking cells through through these calcium channels during the phase of depolarization in the SA nodal cell so this is how the impulse is being transmitted from the SA node to the atrial cell so from here itself you will be able to identify the difference between the waveforms of action potential of the SA nodal cell and the waveform of the atrial myocardium or contractile myocardium so the basic understanding what we need to have is that the action potential waveforms that we have are not similar in contractile myocardium and in specialized myocardium there are differences so the major differences i have already explained to sum up all these differences we will have another segment in which we will have in, in which we will try and sum up all those differences which we have in the action potential waveforms of different cardiac tissues